What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this next question, we have to take this expression, we have to simplify it, and also state the restrictions along the way. So we have two over x plus three minus x minus one over nine minus x squared plus three x plus five over nine minus six x plus x squared. So notice that we are adding and subtracting rational expressions here. So first thing you wanna do with this kind of question is make sure that everything is factored in the numerators and the denominators. So notice here in this first expression, can't really factor anything. The two and the x plus three can't factor. The x minus one you can't factor, but notice the nine minus x squared, that's a difference of squares. So that factors into three minus x and then three plus x like that. And then this over here, the three X plus five, we can't factor that. What about the nine? Let's do this on the side. The nine minus six X plus X squared like this. Well, first off, notice this is a quadratic over here. And so I'm going to put it instead in this format. I'm just going to rearrange everything, right? It's just a nicer format to work with than this over here. This and this are the exact same thing. I just rearranged it. But now notice that x squared minus six x plus nine, that factors into x minus three times x minus three, which would be x minus three squared like that, right? So this denominator here would be x minus three squared. Right, so notice that we factored everything and that's gonna help us when we're combining this into one fraction. So when we're simplifying it, basically what we gotta do is take this, combine it into one uh, rational expression. Now, from here, before simplifying, I feel like it's best to get the restrictions. So notice that x plus three can't, uh, can't equal zero. Right, you can't have the denominator equal zero, which means x cannot equal negative three. That's one restriction. Notice here, the three minus x cannot equal zero, which means x cannot equal three. And then the three plus x, that's actually the exact same as x plus three. And so we'd get that same restriction that x cannot equal negative three. And then notice here, x minus three can't equal zero, which means X cannot equal three. We'd get the same restriction as we did over here. So basically the two restrictions for this is X cannot equal plus or minus three, right? From all of the denominators over here. And so now we have the restriction. So now we can simplify. So to simplify it, what we need to do is get the lowest common denominator. And so notice that we have different factors here. We have x plus three, three minus x. We have three plus x, which is the exact same thing as x plus three. So I'm actually gonna take this and just rewrite it. So we could clearly see these are the same factors. And then we have x minus three over here. Now notice that the three minus x and the x minus three they're almost similar, but they're not the exact same thing, but we can make them the exact same thing by factoring out a negative from this three minus X. So notice if we have three minus X, we could take out a negative from this and we would end up with um, negative three plus X, which would give us X minus three like that. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna rewrite it as negative X minus three, just to make it the same factor as this, because that's gonna help us in simplifying. We're not gonna to have to multiply by another factor because three minus X and X minus three are different factors. So if we don't do this step here, what's gonna happen is we're gonna to have to multiply, we're gonna to have to add in a factor three minus X three minus X up here is just gonna add a lot more unnecessary, uh, unnecessary algebra versus here, if we take out this negative, these two negatives are actually, they could turn into a positive. And because we did that, now 
this x minus 3 is the same factor as this, so we don't have to multiply the x minus 3 over here because the factor is already right there. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to do this step, but I would recommend it. Now from here, let's get the lowest common denominator and so we can combine all of these. So what is the lowest common denominator going to be? Well, notice we have these factors x plus 3 and x minus 3. But notice this x minus 3, it's coming up twice over here. And so if you have factors like that repeating, what you want to do is in the lowest common denominator is going to be the highest order of that factor. And so notice the highest order in this case is 2. The highest order for the x plus 3, notice there's a 1 here and a 1, so this is going to be a 1. But over here we have x minus 3 to the power of 1, but we have here x minus 3 to the power of 2. That's the higher order, so that's what's going to be in the lowest common denominator right there. And so now we just have to figure out what do we have to multiply this by to get to here? Well, we got to multiply it by the x minus 3 squared, which means we have to multiply the top by x minus 3 squared. Here we have x minus 3 times x plus 3. So this we can rewrite as x plus 3, x minus 3 times x minus 3, right? This 2 we could split up here. Now we have x minus 3, we have x plus 3, so there's an x minus 3 that is remaining. So we got to multiply this by x minus 3. This here is in brackets as well. We're going to have to foil these out. Then over here, we have the x minus 3 squared, so what's missing? The x plus 3. Okay, so what's going to happen if we combine this all into 1, we're going to end up with 2 bracket x minus 3 squared plus x minus 1, x minus 3, plus these two. We're multiplying, so we have 3x plus 5 times x plus 3, and then that's going to be all over that lowest common denominator of x plus 3 times x minus 3 squared. All right, and so from here, all that's left to do is to expand this numerator. Another thing that I want to mention, actually, before proceeding with this, is that another way you can deal with these two denominators specifically is you can write this, you can keep it in that the 9 minus x squared, notice that that's 3 minus x, 3 plus x. And then we got the 3x plus 5. And then this here, this factors into 3 minus x squared like that. x minus 3 squared is the exact same as 3 minus x squared because the squared is always going to turn it into a positive. So x minus 3, as we said before, doesn't equal 3 minus x, right? But this does equal that. And the reason why you could try it out, so let's say we plug in a 10 for x, Notice we'll have 10 minus 3, which would give us 7 over here, and then 3 minus 10, which would give us negative 7. So those obviously don't equal. But if we take the 10, and if we plug it in here, we would end up with 7 to the power of 2, and then over here we'd end up with negative 7 to the power of 2, and both of these would be 49. Right, so this square here makes both of these equal right, because it's turning into a positive number. These are always going to be plus and minus of each other, but when you square them, they're both going to be that same positive value. So this and this aren't the same, but this and this are the same. And so another way to rewrite this x minus 3 squared is to write it as 3 minus x squared. And if you keep it like this, what would happen is you can maybe even write this as 3 plus x. You can keep the factors in this kind of format and then keep that negative there. Personally, I don't like to do that, right? I like to have the variable first and then the number. 
but you may see something like this maybe shown in this way, right? Personally, I don't do it like that, but you can do it like this. And so what you would do is you would multiply this by three minus x squared, multiply this by three minus x uh, squared. You'd multiply um, this by three minus x, multiply this by three minus x, then multiply this by three plus x, multiply the top by three plus x. Right, and then you simplify all of that and you would get the same solution that we're gonna get. So just wanted to give a heads up that that's another way to go about it. Personally, I don't do it like that, but uh, you can if you want, or you may see solutions or other examples doing it like that in a textbook. All right, so from here, uh, we just have to simplify everything. So notice we would have two, now x minus three times x minus three, if we FOIL that out, that would be x squared minus six x plus nine. Uh, foiling this out, we would have x squared minus 3x minus x, which would give us minus 4x plus 3, like that. And notice that because that that's a positive, where those two negatives turned into a positive, we don't have to worry about having that minus there and then distributing it in the bracket over here. If you did keep that minus, if you did it the other way, this would be in brackets and then you distribute that negative. But because this was a positive out here, we don't have to worry about that. It's like plus this, but it's like a plus one in front, so all the signs would just stay the same. And then over here, we would end up with three x squared, nine x plus five x would give us 14 x. Um, yeah, and then this would be 15, like that. So that's the numerator expanded, and then that's gonna be all over the x plus three times x minus three to the power of two. And so from here, simplifying the numerator, first thing we wanna do is we actually wanna distribute that two inside the bracket. So I'm actually gonna do it in this line. Uh, we would end up with, yeah, let's just do it here. So two x squared minus 12 x plus 18. So this would end up being 2x squared minus 12x plus 18, like that. And then from here, we got rid of all the brackets, really just combining like terms. So notice we have the 2x squared, we have the x squared, and then we have the 3x squared. So adding those up, that would give us 6x squared, so those go away. And then we'd have the negative 12x minus the 4x, which would be minus 16x, plus the 14x, which would give us minus 2x. So those go away. And then we'd have the 18 plus the 3, which is 21, plus 15 gives us 36. So we'd end up over here. And then that denominator is staying the same. Right, now when you get to here, this actually does end up being the final answer, but what you do want to do is check if that numerator, that resulting numerator that you have factors further, because sometimes what's going to happen is this numerator, it's going to factor further, and then certain brackets can cancel out, like one of the factors might be up top here, x plus 3 times some kind of other factor, and then the x plus 3s would cancel out, or maybe this was x minus three, and then one of these x minus threes can cancel out. All right, so just make sure that when you get to this point, you check if this can factor further, because if it's a multiple choice test, you wanna simplify all the way, right? This may be an answer on a multiple choice test, but then the fully simplified version might be the answer as well, and if you circle this, it would be wrong. So to check if you could factor, first off, notice that we can factor this. We can actually take out a two, uh, but we can't factor this remaining quadratic over here. And notice that the two, it doesn't cancel out with anything in the bottom here. And then this doesn't factor 
further. So 3 times 18 gives us 54. So what two numbers can multiply to 54 and then add up to negative 1, right? Add up to that B value of negative 1. There's no two numbers that would satisfy that, that are integers. No two integers would satisfy that right there. All right, so this here, it doesn't factor further. And so this ends up being the final solution. But again, you want to check if this will factor further, because if it does, even if it does factor further, sometimes it won't simplify any further, but sometimes one of those factors and one of these factors can cancel out, or multiple factors can cancel out. All right, but in this case, you can't factor this further, so this ends up being the final answer. So whether this, if you want to keep that numerator expanded, or if you want to keep that numerator factored, either of these, that's the solution.